Today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today I open myself to God's Word. So I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I'm God's beloved. I'm God's servant. I'm God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Let's talk about time. Everybody say one more time, time. Time is something that I believe, you know, a lot of us need. It's like sometimes we feel like there's a lot of time that we still need. Parang ang dami mong kailangan na oras pero kulang. Nararamdaman nyo ba yun minsan? Parang kulang. Ang dami ko pang kailangan tapusin. Sunday na naman. Bukas may pasok na naman. It's like time is always running short. But you know, my friends, it wasn't always like that. Can I give you a brief history about time? I, I, I loved this research this week when I was doing the, 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 the study that there was a time when there was no time yet. Wala pang orasan, wala pang clock. And they had this rhythm that, that, that this is the word, right? The rhythm of restoration. They had a sort of rhythm to their day because it wasn't ruled by a schedule. It wasn't ru ruled by an agenda. It was just basically natural time until it all changed when they first invented the first clock. It was the, called the Roman sundial in 200 BC. Ganun na katagal na imbento yung orasan. The Roman sundial was like this. You know, you could tell what time of day it was based on the shadow that it would cast on, on the stone. And so they knew. And what's funny is that even during that time, there was already someone complaining about the invention of the clock. There was a Roman playwright by the name of Plotus. He, he quotes, he says that, the gods confound the man who first found out how to distinguish the hours. Confound him too, who in this place set up a sundial to cut and hack my days so wretchedly into small portions. You know how some of you complain and you write a hate mail or a hate message? This guy, whenever he complains, he, he writes it in poetry. That's how amazing he is. And so he was complaining about how they invented the clock. And then fast forward to the 6th century that would evolve our relationship with time. Because St. Benedict figured out a way how to organize the prayer life of the monks in the monastery. So they, they revolved around seven prayers around each day and that would determine you know how what time it was during that day and then by the 12th century they had pretty much figured out how to build a mechanical clock around that schedule so you see the relationship with time was changing but things took a different course in 1370 this is a history lesson for a lot of you all right I, I i know you didn't expect to come to class today but this is a history lesson in 1370 that's the first time that they erected the first public clock in Cologne, Germany. And by this time, you know, the public was now conscious. Anong oras na? Magtatrabaho na. Meron na silang orasan. But prior to that, time was natural. You know, you woke up when the sun went up. You went to bed when the sun went down and when the moon went up. Ganun ang oras. It was natural. We were governed by God. Why? Because God governs the sun and the moon. 
But now that they invented the clock, we're no longer governed by God in the sense that we're governed by who? By man, by your boss, by your wife, by your job. Kung sino ang kailangan gumising sa'yo, yan ang nag-govern sa'yo, di ba? If before, we only woke up because our bodies were done resting, now we wake up because our alarm is ringing. So now time is artificial. And then, this is when it all changed. In 1879, the greatest, one of the greatest inventions of man was created by a man named Thomas Edison. Kilala niyo pa ba si Thomas Edison? What did he invent? What did he invent? The light bulb. The light bulb. When the light bulb was invented, you can already stay past 6 p.m. Ngayon, pwede na magtrabaho kahit madilim na. Pwede na mag-all night study group. Bakit? May ilaw na. So, was that helpful? Yes, in so many ways. But you know what? It also created a little bit of challenges to all of us. Why? Because you used to hear about great men and women who would wake up early in the morning to pray. You know, lengthy prayers, two hours, four hours, and they would be awake by 4 a.m. You know, people like St. Therese of Avila, John Wesley, John Knox, and of course, Jesus himself, who would pray sometimes all night. And then you get to, to, to ask, how in the world did they do that? Paano nila nagagawa yon? And then you realize that, yes, because they can do it because they didn't have Netflix. They didn't have Instagram Reels. They didn't have YouTube. They didn't have electricity. If before, check this out. The average time that people slept every day before the invention of the light bulb, you'll be shocked by this. Ask me how much time. 11 hours. When was the last time you slept 11 hours? Have you ever slept 11 hours in your life? Maybe when you were sick. Maybe when you were young. But 11 hours every day, grave, nakakapagod naman yon. But it's because they couldn't do anything. They needed to be asleep by 7. They needed to wake up by 5 a.m. and start doing work. So now things have changed. And so this introduces us now to the greatest conundrum of our time. Lalim non, conundrum. Everybody say conundrum. It's, uh, conundrum means it's a perplexing problem. Problem na lang. <laughs> the greatest conundrum of, of our time is this. Listen to me. We have invented labor and time-saving devices. Do you agree? Do you agree? I mean, every innovation that you see is a time-saving device. Like for instance, if before we used to walk, now we've got cars. You know, to bring you quicker to your destination. Now you get to go to your destination quicker. Except maybe sometimes when you're in EDSA, mas mabilis maglakad kasi sumakay ng kotse. If before you needed to hunt for food and, and, and kill and, 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 and you know, harvest and, and prepare that food, now all you need to do is just you know, book, grab delivery. It's just a press of a button. So that saves you time, right? If before you used to write those, those letters, ang tawag nila yung liham, naalala nyo pa ba yun? Yung liham, tapos dadating sa, sa, sa ano? One week later, two weeks later. Ngayon, two seconds, nandiyan na yung email. Facebook Messenger. Nandiyan na, kausap mo na sa FaceTime, sa Zoom. If before we used to do all of these things long cut, ngayon, sinort cut na natin, di ba? Pero tanong ko, if we were able to create all of these labor time-saving devices, saan na punta yung oras na natitipid natin? Why do we feel like sometimes we still lack time? Do you have that same thought? If we created emails, phones, devices, planes, and all these innovations, and that's saving me time, yes, but where is my time going? Would you like to know the answer? Ask me what? We spend our time doing other things. Here's a little trivia. Before the 1960s, sino dito buhay na before the 1960s? Raise your hand. Come on. Let's be honest. Alam naman ni Lord eh. So, natago mo pa kay Lord. Parang, yalo man ako. 
proud, maging proud kayo dyan because pinaghirapan niyo yung age nyo yan. So, anyway, so before the 1960s, in the U.S., I, I only knew this because of research, and it's interesting, before the 1960s, in the U.S., they had laws in, in some cities that, that pr- promulgated and enforced that businesses would be closed by 6 p.m. So lahat ng negosyo, sarado na ng 6 p.m. And get this, on Sundays, nothing would be open except for church. So the only thing you could do before the 1960s is go to church. You couldn't go to the mall. You couldn't go to a sports game. You couldn't go to an event. The only thing that you could do is go to church. But you know, Sundays evolve. The Sundays that we know now, it's different from that, right? Now Sundays have evolved from becoming just worship and rest to becoming errand day for a lot of us. It's becoming date day for a lot of us, mauling for a lot of us. And that's fine. I'm not saying that that's bad, that we need to go back to before the 1960s. Kasi nandito na tayo eh. We cannot go back to a time when there's no technology. I mean, imagine, life without ways is horrible. Amen? Life without Spotify is boring. So we, I'm not saying that we need to go back to you staring at a wall all day long. You're not doing anything and you're bored. No, we live in different times. Here's what I'm saying. Are you listening? Say, I'm listening. Perhaps there's more to life than just binging on Netflix all day long. Or perhaps there's more to life. There's more to life than just shopping on a random day and spending your time just lounging around. Because here is the word for today. Sabbath is about time to be with God. It's about being with God. It's, it's about worshiping God. So to those people who might feel like, yes, Brother Audi, I agree with you. I lack time. I'm always running to the next event and the next meeting and the next thing. But there's also another group of person, of people. People who say that I have so much time on my hands. I'm killing time right now. And I'm trying to, to, to look for ways on how to kill time. Parang napanood ko na lahat ng, sini, ng, ng movie dun sa lib, na libre. Dahil every morning na lang, nandun ako, Brother Odi. There are some of you who are like that, who are retired and you have so much time on your hands. So to me, Maybe the issue is, yes, you've got so much time. Or maybe, yes, you don't have time. But here's the solution. The solution is not more time or less time. The solution is this, is to actually use the limited time that you have been given for what really matters the most. Silence. I hope you're receiving this. Because there's one author that says this, and I quote, his name is William Irvin. He's a Scottish evangelist. He wrote a book called A Guide to the Good Life. He says, there is a danger that you and I will mislive. That despite all our activity, despite all our pleasant diversions that we might have enjoyed while alive, here's the warning, you might end up living a bad life. There is, in other words, a danger that when you are on your deathbed, you will look back and realize that you wasted your one chance at living. Instead of spending time pursuing something genuinely valuable, you squandered it because you allowed yourself to be distracted by the various bubbles of life. I think that's the worst nightmare that you and I can have. I mean, if you're in that stage of life and you are in your deathbed one day and you realize all of these things that you did and you wasted time. Yes, I was a legendary mode in Call of Duty. Yes, I finished every round in Super Mario Brothers. Yes, I reached 3,284 in Candy Crush. But does that really matter in the end? I mean, you kind of realize how much time am I really wasting? Because if you think about it, it's not a lack of time that's your problem. It's just that you might not be using the time that was given to you for what really matters the most. You know, some of you, you're able to watch TikTok Reels for 30 minutes. But did you know that that equivalent for 30 minutes could be the same time that you could be praying for your entire family? Can I get an amen? Amen. You can spend a whole hour watching that episode of your favorite series, but that whole hour, if you use it from time to time, can be used for reading scripture and learning about Jesus. And you can finish reading the Bible in six months. So it's really not a lack of time. It's using the time that we have been given to use it for what really matters the most. And I, I want to 
speak this important message to you because, you know, th there's a cost whenever we use our time for the wrong things. Like, for instance, you might be successful in your business right now, but at what cost is that business? You might have ended a relationship. Some of you might have ended a marriage. Some of you have put through kids through college and praise God, but you might have failed in teaching them the ways of God. I mean, you might be wealthy in terms of money, but you're not wealthy in ways that are good to God, in what really matters the most. Jesus says this, what does it profit for man, for any of us, to gain the whole world, but to lose our very soul? Our time is limited. May oras tayo. And when that clock runs out, you can't go back and simply say, you know, I wish I did this. I wish I did that. I regret doing this. While you have time right now, my dear friends, you can still make the most of the things that are precious to you. What? Relationship with God. Build it now. Start that relationship with Him. Relationship with people that you love. Because I tell you, my friends, the things that we own, we're not going to be able to use it in heaven. It's the very things that we enjoy, the relationship that we have. That's what we'll bring to the next life. That's what we will remember on our deathbed. That's how Jesus lived. That's why the gift of Sabbath, let me say this again. The gift of Sabbath to all of us is that God wants us to have time. What time? Time for three things. I'll give it to you. This is how you follow God's rhythm of restoration. Are you ready? Intro pa lang yun, huh? This is now the meat of what I want to share with you. Three things that I want you to have time for whenever you practice Sabbath. By the way, Sabbath is not only on Sundays. Sabbath can be any day that you declare will be the Lord's Day. Because for some of you, ang Sabbath nyo, hindi linggo, lalo na kung servant kayo. Bakit? Kasi hindi naman kayo nakakapagpahinga talaga. Ang Sabbath nyo, iba sa inyo, Monday, yung rest day nyo, or Saturday. For me, it's Saturday. That's my rest day. I, I spend it with my family, spend it with my loved ones. But here's, here is uh, the first one, all right? The first thing that God wants you to have time for whenever you have your Sabbath is it's a time for buffeting. Everybody say buffeting. Sino ang mahilig sa buffet? Taas ang kamay. Yan. Sige, taas ang kamay nyo. Baka libre kayo ng katabi nyo. Sabbath is a time for buffeting. Let me prove it to you, all right? Scripturally. In Exodus chapter 16, Moses said, everybody read. What did Moses say? Wala. Walang sinabi si Moses. Ayan. Moses said, eat this food today. For today is a Sabbath day dedicated to the Lord. There will be no food on the ground today. Touch your neighbor and say, Eat today. I love that. Eat today. Walang number of times sinabi si Moses. So you can eat as much as you want. You know, one thing that I realize is this. Whenever we work, we're always worried about the, the, the harvest or the fruits of our labor, if it will produce anything. But you know, God's promise on Sabbath is that you don't need to work today. Kasi ang maganda sa Sabbath, ito, pakinggan niyo ako ha. Di ba tayo, worry tayo parate, whole week. You know, we're trying to produce outcome. We're trying to produce profit. We're trying to earn for a living. And then Sunday, what happens is that we're already worried about the following week. I mean, some of you here, Sunday pala, nagpe-prepare na kayo for Monday or Tuesday or for the entire week. You know what God is trying to tell us today? Ask me what? God is telling you, stop. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, stop. Stop. Kasi minsan ganun tayo eh. Lord, na-bless mo na ako today. Pero Lord, may kailangan ako ulit sa iyo bukas. Sabbath is a time for you to just stop. And tell the Lord, Lord, I do not need anything right now. All I want to do is to thank you for the ways that you have already blessed me this week. Wala na akong kailangan. Magpapasalamat na lang ako. That's the garden living, by the way. When you're in the garden, you work for six days, you rest for one day to do what? To eat all the fruits from the trees that you tilled and you toiled all week long. Work for six days, rest for one day, repeat. Gusto niyo ba yung rhythm na yon? Parang ang sarap, di ba? I mean, the Lord knew how to do it. He worked for six, he rested for one, 
And then he repeated the process. So that's a gift for you. It's a time for you to what? To eat, to enjoy the fruits of your labor. You don't need anything else. You just need to appreciate and thank the Lord for what He uh, has already given to you. Palakpakan natin si Lord. Amen. Here's the second thing. Sabbath is a time for breathing. It's a time for breathing. Let me read it to you. In Exodus chapter 16, verse 25, Moses says, You may gather food, the food, for six days, but the seventh day is the Sabbath. And then he says, There will be no food on the ground that day. Everybody inhale. Everybody exhale. Everybody inhale. And everybody exhale. Everybody inhale. Tingin sa katabi. And then exhale. Para lang magising sila, ha? The requirement for Sabbath is this, ha? Nakakatawa to if you really listen to the message. The busiest time for somebody like me, and a lot of the servants will probably agree with me on this, it's Sunday. It's my busiest time of the week because I'm involved in ministry work. I'm involved in a lot of meetings. I meet a lot of people. Sunday is crazy day for me. So for me, Sabbath day is not really Sunday. Sa- Saturday is my Sabbath day. That's when I deliberately remove myself from ministry. Yes, I talk to some people, especially if it's an emergency, but I spend time with my family. Saturday is the time that we visit my in-laws. We spend time with them, and that's like part of our tradition now. Every Saturday, we will not miss going to their house and spend time with family. Because yun ang Sabbath day namin. Because their only requirement for Sabbath is that you would breathe. Kaya nga sabi ni Lord, there will be no food on the ground that day. You don't need to do anything for the field. All you need to do is to breathe in the grace of God, the blessing of God. So I, I do hope that some of you are listening to this. Yung, lalo na yung mga kulang sa tulong. Tingnan mo nga yung katabi mo. Mukha ba siya yung, pinag, yung sinasabi ko? Tinutukoy ko? Na kulang sa tulong? You need to rest. And that's the invitation. The Lord is giving you a license right now to rest. It's a command. Kailangan mong magpahinga. Sabi mo sa katabi mo ngayon, Si Lord na nagsabi. Si Lord na nagsabi na magpahinga ka rin. Rest one day, work six days. Alright? Amen. Third, Sabbath is a time for being. Everybody say being. Again, in Exodus it says that on the Sabbath day, you must each stay in your place. I love this point. On the Sabbath day, you must each stay in your place. The only requirement for Sabbath, it seems to me, is that we remember that we are a child of God. Stay in your place. What is that place? It's not a physical place. It's a state of mind. Sino ka ba? Di ba anak ng Diyos? Anak ng Diyos. So, being a child of God, that is your place. So, the Lord is telling you, you don't need to work today. You need to remember your place. What is your place? You are my child. And as your child, I will provide for you. I will care for you. I will love you. I will give to you. So Sabbath is a time for being, to, to enjoy being God's child. Some of us were bosses from Monday to Friday, and then we're husbands from Monday to Saturday, and we're dads from, from all this week. There needs to be a time when you can just say, Lord, I am your child today. This is the time when I will just be with you and I will enjoy being your child. I will, you will spoil me today. You will provide for my needs today. You will heal me today. Sabbath is a time for you to be God's child. That's the only requirement, that you be God's child. Amen. Sabbath is a time for buffeting, for eating all the fruits that you have worked for, that God has already provided for you. Sabbath is a time for, what's the second one? For breathing, that you just breathe in and thank the Lord. Sabbath is a time for being. I want to close with this thought. You follow God's rhythm of restoration, but that sounds so deep, right? Right? Parang lalim. How do I? There's a rhythm of restoration. How do I? How do I follow that rhythm again with all the distractions and noise 
in my environment, brother Audrey, how do I do that? Here's, here's the key. You need to have a template. Everybody say template. A template is something that you copy. Yung kukopyahin mo. What better template that you can copy from other than Jesus himself? Because clearly to me, Jesus is that person who embodies somebody who used all of his time well. Do you agree? I mean, if you think about it, para mahina yan, do you agree? Yes. When you think about it, Jesus started his public ministry at the age of, how many of you know? 30, not 13. 13 was when they, he was brought out into the world. But public ministry, when he started preaching, healing, 30. Yon, 3 zero. okay? So, when did Jesus end his ministry? 33, correct. Palakpakan natin yung mga matatalino dito sa harapan. Galing nila, oh. 33. So, three years. Think about this, ha? Huh? For three years, Jesus evangelized, discipled, and created, you know, the world that we know now. You know, that was three years. Of Jesus, when He said, follow me, it was a physical, follow me. It was a spiritual, follow me. Come with me. He was saying, in other words, learn my life, study my craft. And I realized that it's hard to do that, right? It's hard to follow Jesus. So I want to tell you the story about my father-in-law. We call him Ernesto Tianco. That's his name. But we fondly call him Papa Ernie. He, he might be watching right now. So I'm not, I'm not uh, doing this simply because I want to earn favor from him. But I'm just saying that he's an amazing man. And uh, I'm proud that he's my father-in-law. <laughs> but anyway, Papa Ernie, uh, two years ago, he started the hobby of biking. Sino mahilig mag-bike? Yeah, dito. So he loves biking. And then eventually that hobby turned into a passion. So little did we know that he was, he was really into it. He was training. And then he joined a competitive race. The race was in Subic for 100 kilometers. 100 kilometers is roughly the distance from SM North, if you live in that side, all the way to, let's say, Tarlac. You know, that's roughly around, uh, Pampanga is about 70 kilometers, so roughly around that, that, that distance, no? So, binaik niya yon. For three and a half hours, he finished. And you know what? We were so proud of him because he was able to place 15th placer in his first competition. Grave. Tas alam niyo, it wasn't enough for him because he knew he could still stretch himself. So, he enrolled himself to the 200 kilometer. Grave, 200 kilometers. That's roughly the distance now from, from uh, close to Baguio, maybe La Union, because Baguio is around 240 kilometers. And mind you, the, the, the route that he takes, the path, hindi lang patagyan. It's not just a flat road. He goes up, he goes down. It's a lot of effort. But he finished that race in 7.5 hours. Amazing. Pero hindi natapos doon. Kasi kaya pa niya. So last year, he got himself into another race now for 300 kilometers. <laughs> it's roughly around the distance from SM North to uh, Belair, Aurora maybe. Layunon. And you know what? He finished that race for 16 hours. Of course, may stop over siya to rest, to eat. But imagine, he started racing at 5 a.m., finished at 9 p.m. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. You know how old my dad is? Ask me how old. 70 years old. And if I ask you now, if I ask you now, tanong ko lang ka sa inyo, ha? If, for instance, he invites you to go with him on a 100-kilometer race tomorrow, papayag ba kayo? Papacheck up daw muna. Payag kayo? Ako hindi. Hindi ko nga kaya tapusin 30 kilometers in my condition today. Diba? But you know what? The only reason why he could do it is because of this. It's because for the past two years now, he has been waking up at 6 a.m. until 8 a.m. He bikes three to four times a week from those times and he rides about 50 kilometers every time. So imagine. Now what is my point? My point puto. Ask me, what's your point, Brother Audi? My point is simple. If you want to have that kind of life, you have to adopt the lifestyle. 
A lot of us, we say, Lord, I want your life. I want to be as loving as you. I want to be as prayerful as you. I want to be as generous as you. But you cannot experience the life of Jesus if you do not know how to adopt His lifestyle. What is the lifestyle of Jesus? He prayed regularly. He served regularly. He loved generously. He forgave as much as He could. See, a lot of us, we want to be called champions, but we don't want the challenges. We want the glory, but we don't want to do the grind. We want the win, but we don't want to do the work. And Jesus is saying, follow me. If you want to have my life, you got to have that lifestyle of waking up early and connecting with the Lord. You got to have that lifestyle of that hunger and desire for people, of evangelizing people, because you cannot live that life if you don't have that lifestyle. And I know that many of us are complaining that we don't have much time. The time is short. And it's true. But only because you're not using the time that the Lord has given you for what really matters the most. That at the end of your life, this is what you will remember. And this is what God will tell you in your face. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have run your race. You were distracted a few times, but you stayed the course. And now, congratulations. You are at your finish line. You have spent your time well. Work for six days. God gives you that much time. But rest for one day. Because God gives you that same amount of time. To do what? To do all of things. To enjoy His creation. To spend time with your Creator. Because I truly believe this. That what you give time to will be the person that you become. So whatever time that you give to right now. That you spend copious amounts of time. That's the person that you will become. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for this word. If you are blessed, clap your hands. trust and my full love and I believe you will bless me more so I can give more in Jesus name Amen It is so beautiful to be in the presence of God. And can we pray 
right now. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, I want you just to lift up to him all your needs. Whatever you're going through, he knows what you're going through. He knows where you're coming from. He knows the burdens of your heart. Just, just bring it up to God and say, Lord, I surrender everything that all hurt and all pain and all worries and all fear. Lift them all up to you, Lord. I surrender them to you. You are my king and you are the center of my life. And I trust you and I know that you are blessing me right now. I receive your love. I receive your joy. I receive your peace. I receive your healing. I receive your provision in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me today. Live a fantastic life.